Oh. Okay, mga kaibigan. So, I can confidently say that the Poco F5 is the best value smartphone of 2023. Basically, it offers a flagship phone experience for a mid-range price. Surprise, surprise. Um, we've seen this a couple of times before in the past. Para sa akin, still, the best to do it was the Poco X3 Pro. It offered basically what this is offering right now during 2021 for just a little over $200 or 10,000 Philippine pesos. And ito naman tayo ngayon with the Poco F5 which costs about 20,000 Philippine pesos or about 400 US dollars. Pero of course, meron tong early bird price which is an insane price for just a little over 18,000 Philippine pesos. And sa mga hindi nakakalam, basically, yun yung sale price ng Poco F5 as much as Poco claims it to be like the early bird price. Yeah, it is the early bird price technically. It is also the sale price of the Poco F5. And pagdating sa flagship phone experience na sinabi ko kanina uh, about the Poco F5, about 80% flagship experience siya. Yung 20% sa build quality nag-compromise dito yung Poco F5. But yeah, here are my thoughts and full review ko ng Poco F5. Okay, to start off, ito nga ang full spec list ng Poco F5. But really, the only specs na kailangan nyo lang malaman dito sa Poco F5 is ang 6.67 inch nga na AMOLED display, 120Hz, Dolby Vision, HDR10+, ang Snapdragon 7 Plus Gen 2, which basically offers you a flagship performance sa isang mid-range smartphone in the Poco F5 and where majority of your money is actually going. Yung base version ito, which in my opinion is yun na lang dapat yung kunin nyo with 8 gigs of memory and 256 gigs of storage with UFS 3.1 storage ang surprisingly solid na 64 megapixel main sensor niyan 8 megapixel ultra wide and wag niya lang pansin yung third sensor na yan dual stereo speakers with a 3.5 mm headphone jack which I would have preferred to be at the bottom but oh well tapos ang 5000 mAh battery with 67 watts of fast charging. And meron nga tong three color options, black which is the one that I got, white and blue. And since literally dalawang bagay lang yung hindi ko nagustuhan dito sa Poco F5, unay na natin yun. So first off is ang glossy finish sa likod na yan. Again, I don't mind having a smartphone with a plastic back. Just make it a matte finish please. And like magkano ba aabutin kumpara sa glossy finish if gagawin yung matte finish yung likod ng phone. So as nakikita nyo naman sobrang fingerprinty and uh, yeah, it scratches easily. Although in my case wala pa naman gasgas dito since sa uh, one week na ginagamit ko to is uh, gamit ko yung soft clear TPU case nyan. And sa so, mga gusto makakita nun, yan nga. And yung pangalawang bagay na ayoko dito is yung basically almost flush na power button. I don't know what's up with that. Halos wala siyang travel and hindi siya clicky at all. Uh, compared to the uh, volume rockers which are nice and clicky and has uh, good feedback and travel. But on the positive side is uh, super fast naman yung uh, side mounted fingerprint scanner niyan. And you can pretty much use the phone without ever having to press the uh, power button. You can just double tap to wake and sleep the phone. But yeah, starting off with the 20% na binanggit ko kanina that makes this not feel like a flagship smartphone and that's the build so dito sa Poco F5 is uh, plastic nga yung back neto plastic frame and as uh, naalala nyo sa mga nakapanood ng unboxing video ko neto is if I try to bend it eh, rinig nyo may creaking sound which is a bit scary pero at least it barely flexes if I try to bend it ewan ko siguro sa mga bodybuilder eh, mas kaya nilang i-bend pa to but uh, for me, that's something you can fix by just using a case. Me, I'm a case person, so not really a big issue for me. I'll just uh, slap on a good case on this, and I'm good to go. And this design is uh, basically recycled from previous uh, Poco and Xiaomi devices, which I really don't mind. It's simple to look at and not really trying hard to look like anything. So right side nga ng phone, we have the power button slash fingerprint scanner. Uh, volume rockers, we have nothing on the left side. At the top, we do have the 3.5mm headphone jack, a speaker grill, which works actually in conjunction with the earpiece speakers. And beside that, we do have the secondary noise cancelling microphone, IR blaster, and at the bottom, we have the SIM card tray, 
uh, main microphone, USB Type-C charging port, and the bottom firing speakers. Of course, we do have the hole punch for the front-facing 16 megapixel camera. Although weirdly enough, is masyadong yan, masyadong malaki para sa akin yung outer ring sa labas, but oh well. And ang gusto ko dito is hindi thick. Yeah, it is a bit thicker than the uh, side bezels yung um, bottom chin natin, but it's significantly thinner compared to previous um, Poco and Xiaomi devices which I really like. And di ako sure pero tinitignan ko ulit but yeah definitely just a bit thicker yung uh, bottom chin natin kumpara sa top bezel. And I'm not sure but this may or may not be a good thing to you but the phone is really light at just 180 grams so this is the first phone I've held in a while na it feels really light. And actually compared sa Galaxy S23 Ultra ko, this feels like a toy, yung Poco F5. So again, that depends on you if that's a good thing or a bad thing, uh, how light the Poco F5 is to you. But yeah, pretty much yun lang naman yung bagay na makes the Poco F5 not feel like a flagship smartphone. Of course, I get it. Poco had to make a compromise somewhere and that compromise had to be the build, which I honestly don't mind since the 80% of this phone that feels like a flagship, yung uh, display, camera, performance, and battery is all the great. And yeah, moving on to the display. So again, we do have a 6.67 inch AMOLED 120Hz display and it's really, really good. Like, ang inexpect ko dito, yeah, it's an AMOLED display, colors are vibrant. Pero ang inexpect ko is it doesn't get bright enough uh, that hindi mo siya mababasa under direct sunlight pero hindi yung problema. Like, this is perfectly viewable even under direct sunlight. And this being a 1080p panel, it's plenty sharp for a screen of this size. And honestly, kahit sa mga flagship smartphones, 1080p should be the max resolution that you should put on any handheld device. Like, having a 1440p or even a 4K display for that matter is just unnecessary stress on the GPU of your device. Viewing angles are great. There's very minimal color shift uh, even at extreme angles. And ang gusto ko dito is uh, usually kasi sa mga cheaper na AMOLED displays is hindi dark enough yung blacks niya na nadidistinguish mo pa yung bezel itself from the screen. Um, kasi usually is may koti pang backlight bleed sa mga uh, cheaper AMOLED displays. Pero dito, uh, the blacks are really black. What did he say? And of course, this being a 120Hz display is uh, apaka is smooth nga naman ng pag-scroll, mga transitions, and very nice. Although one thing dito sa display settings is yung refresh rate, you actually have the option for a default which out of the box, ito actually yung setting sa refresh rate, default recommended. It adjusts the refresh rate dynamically daw. But this isn't really an LTPO display as dapat. If I leave the screen on idle for a bit, it should dial down to 60Hz. But as you can see, it's still at 120Hz. So I'm not sure what that's about. And certain apps kasi dito sa MIUI, um, may mga apps na nilalak niya talaga sa 60Hz if nakaset to sa default. So, for me, sinat ko lang to sa 120Hz all the time. And yeah, I didn't have any problems with the battery here sa Poco F5. Actually, excellent yung battery life dito. And yeah, moving on naman sa cameras dito sa Poco F5, which is actually very surprising yung performance neto as uh, really good yung performance ng cameras dito sa Poco F5. Especially for a mid-range phone, like the pictures that you can take here, uh, especially in good lighting, are really really good you have good sharpness good detail colors are not oversaturated just the i would describe as the right type of punchy colors without me having to think na wait painting bato and of course very good then ang dynamic range and nandiyan din yung ultra wide lens and while it's really convenient to have an ultra wide lens ang main issue lang dito sa ultra wide is that it tends to distort quite a bit on the corners which Usually, yun nga yung sakit sa mga uh, cheaper smartphones with ultra-wide lenses. And surprisingly, also in low-light or nighttime shots, the Poco F5 does already a really good job in the default photo mode in taking low-light shots. And while meron ding uh, dedicated night mode dito sa Poco F5, I don't generally recommend it as uh, masyadong overdone yung processing sa mga uh, shots na to. And also, you can take some really good and detailed selfies using the front-facing 6 megapixel sensor. Tapos on the video side naman, you can record up to 4K at 30fps uh, using the main sensor. And yeah, for the most part, you can take some really good 
maybe one of the best 4K videos that you can take on a mid-range smartphone. And sa tulong ng OIS, kahit na tumatakbo ka pa, is uh, very nice and stabilized naman yung uh, video. Hello, hello. Mic test, mic test, sound check, sound check. So, ito naman yung vlog test sa Poco F5 recording at 1080p 30fps and unfortunately, you can only record up to 1080p 60fps using the front-facing camera. And uh, kahit na ganun man, is solid pa din naman kahit paano yung 1080p video na makukuha mo dito. And uh, wala siyang option for any kind of stabilization here. Pero, Okay pa din ang performance niya kahit na wala siyang kahit anong stabilization sa front facing camera. And yeah, overall, really solid yung camera system dito sa Poco F5. And pagdating nga sa performance, dito na nga napupunta yung karamihan ng ginasas yung pera is yung Snapdragon 7 Plus Gen 2 na nandito. Offers you a flagship phone experience just uh, just browsing through the UIs niya, kikita niya naman. Although hindi ko mapapakita sa video ko yung smoothness na 120Hz as sa 30fps lang video na to pero just browsing through the UI, opening closing apps is snappy, fast and snappy for the most part, no problem here with multitasking on the Poco F5 very nice, very smooth and pagdating naman sa performance niya in Genshin Impact, so kahit ang Genshin in the highest graphic settings is no sweat para dito sa Poco F5 with that uh, Snapdragon 7 Plus Gen 2 and the highest temp na natin ko dito is actually when downloading Genshin, so ang highest temp na nakuha ko noon is uh, 42 degrees Celsius. And ang highest temp na nakuha ko dito sa Genshin while playing for about 30 minutes to an hour is about uh, 41 degrees Celsius. And pagdating naman sa speaker quality nito, it's nice and loud for the most part, although not as loud as uh, previous mid-range smartphones I've used. And ang maganda dito sa Poco F5 compared to the Poco F4 of uh, last year is sa uh, balance na actually output from the uh, bottom speaker to the top speaker. So, uh, very nice uh, improvement na yun para sa akin. And dito actually, sa Dolby settings dito, sa Dolby Atmos, is highly recommended kasi inyo na i-on nyo yan. Kasi if naka-off yung Dolby Atmos is basically flat yung sound ng speakers nito. And uh, at least for me, yung recommended ko dito sa graphic equalizer is nakaset siya sa jazz. And really, the only thing performance-wise na may slight hiccup dito sa Poco F5, actually biniblame ko to sa MIUI, is dito sa multitasking paminsan, uh, parang hindi nagra-respond if you try to switch to a different app. So there are times where you're in the multitasking screen, tapos may pinindot kang app and it just wouldn't respond. Na minsan nakala ko, hindi ko napindot yung screen, pero may times lang talaga na hindi nagiging responsive yung touch screen uh, once you go into the multitasking screen. But yeah, that's pretty much it. Something that uh, Poco can easily fix through a software update. And speaking of software, this is currently running on uh, MIUI 14.0. 4 on top of Android 13. And so far, yung parang software tricks na gusto ko talaga dito is dito sa additional settings, uh, gesture shortcuts, is you can actually backtap for certain commands. Although, disappointed ako kasi dito sa backtap is there's no option to turn on the torch or yung flash. So currently, sa akin set siya sa open the calculator. So you have the option for double backtap and the triple backtap. But dito sa backtap feature, it's a bit inconsistent as Sometimes, kailangan makuha mo yung tamang bilis. Uh, there are times na uh, it will respond sa mabilis na double back tap. Uh, there are times na kailangan 1, 2. Actually, ngayon hindi pa nga. Sige, 1, 2. Yeah. <laughs> and ito talaga ang gusto ko with having a physical fingerprint scanner. Uh, ang ginawa dito ng Poco, uh, just like with previous Poco and Xiaomi devices, is you can actually assign commands to just tapping the fingerprint scanner. So for me, uh, double tap the fingerprint scanner to turn on the torch or flash. So very nice and very responsive. So yeah, that's really convenient. And ang gusto ko talaga sa screen recorder app dito sa MIUI is you can actually select yung frame rate on your screen recording. Of course, uh, select the resolution, uh, the bit rate, and that's not really something you see with other mid-range smartphones kasi usually lock na yung FPS nun. Yun yung uh, most important thing eh. 
uh, dito sa FPS sa uh, frame rate, sometimes yung screen recording is ilalak niya sa 24 FPS or 30 FPS. Hindi mo malaman tuloy if uh, anong frame rate when screen recording pero ang maganda nga dito is uh, dati nga wala pa ngayong option dito sa 90 FPS. But hey, you have the option for 90 FPS screen recording here on the Poco F5. And yeah, that's pretty much it for the performance and software on the Poco F5. Again, a flagship experience. And last but not the least is the 5000 mAh battery with 67 watts of fast charging. So, sa typical use ko, about uh, medium to heavy use. So, combination niya na social media, watching video, some gaming, and picture taking. I can easily average 6 hours of screen on time with over 50% left by the end of the day. And sa mga more heavy days ko, with 8 hours of screen on time, I can end it with 30% left. And actually, medyo pahirapan pa nga yung pag-test ng battery dito sa Poco F5. As, ewan ko talaga kung ano meron sa Xiaomi Poco sa MIUI. Um, tinanggal nila yung option para makita mo yung SOT mo. So, I had to manually time yung screen on time ko, which is a huge pain. And palagay na natin na ikaw yung isa mga tao na kayang patayin to in a day, you can easily charge your phone, uh, your Poco F5, from 0 to 100, uh, in my case, 1% to 100, in just 50 minutes using the 67 watt fast charger. And pagdating nga sa battery dito sa Poco F5, it's an S. Excellent yung uh, battery dito. But yeah, yun nga yung Poco F5 offers you um, 80% of a flagship phone, um, except nga sa build. But I feel like pagdating sa build quality nito, that's not something that a lot of people will really see as a compromise as it's, again, uh, really light. I think for most people who are gonna buy this phone, will just put a case on it anyway. So, yeah. And pagdating naman sa pag-recommend nito, obviously, I can easily recommend this even at the um, MSRP of about uh, 21,000 pesos. Of course, if you are able to wait, then uh, wait for it to go on sale as you can buy this for a little over uh, 18,000 Philippine pesos. And pagdating naman sa ibang phones na similarly priced dito sa Poco F5, ang closest thing na naiisip ko is yung uh, Redmi Note 12 Pro Plus which in all honesty is hindi ko na kayang i-recommend yun considering that you can buy something like the Poco F5 now. And alam ko may mga mag-argue dyan na ang focus ng uh, Redmi Note 12 Pro series is yung camera pero considering na really good na yung camera na itong Poco F5 for the price uh, regardless of this being a uh, mid-range smartphone is yeah, I'd much rather get this than the Redmi Note 12 Pro Plus. And in my opinion lang naman to, considering I've extensively used the Poco F5, um, it's not really worth spending the extra money to go for the Poco F5 Pro. Yeah, technically it does have a faster chipset but not by a lot. And yeah, if you couldn't tell already, I really like the Poco F5. Uh, I can easily recommend this to anyone, uh, especially to those people who have been wanting to upgrade for a really long time now but couldn't find a smartphone that offers a flagship phone experience for this price. So. Yeah, and yeah, that's gonna do it. I think I didn't forget anything. Of course, kung gusto nyong bilhin yung sarili nyong Poco F5, is, uh, I'll leave the links in the description of this video. Uh, as always, leaving a like is the easiest way to support the channel. Consider subscribing if you like my content and turn on notifications for all so you'll be updated on my latest videos. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace. Still got a chance.